I'm with Dr. K. Marie Reed Lombardo. She is chair of the SSAT's Public Policy and Advocacy Committee panel. You'll be meeting Monday at 8 a.m. Right. and talking about a very controversial topic, uh, Affordable Care Act, its consequences intended and unintended. Can you give us an idea of what some of these consequences are? Well, we, we want to focus on two things. We want to focus on the intended and unintended consequences of society, towards society, what are the benefits and what are the potential ramifications of this act. And we also want to focus selfishly on ourselves. How does this affect surgeons and what are the benefits and unintended benefits for, for, for surgeons. So we have an excellent group of speakers who will have a debate of sorts. You know, nothing is ever black or white, but they'll have a debate of sorts to stir the audience to think about these issues. When it comes to the SSAT, can you give me a sense, an immediate sense, of, of how the Affordable Care Act may affect your organization? Well, it's, it's the members of the or organization. Sure. We are the membership. And so one of the things that uh, are plus is mandating quality, improving quality for patient care. It forces us, really, to try to reduce our complications, such as wound infections, urinary tract infections, and it will be a huge cost savings for for health care but also a benefit to our patients which we serve. One of the other things that's very important is the electronic medical record that has been a, a, a side benefit to this act in hopes that hopefully one day we can have a national access to health care and if patients travel the country it'll be easy to um, identify what their past medical histories are, what their allergies are, what kind of surgical procedures are. That's the long-term goal but this allows for a start. Well, what about this transition to a performance-based model where data outcomes are going to be important? Will your membership have to change the way they do surgery, change techniques? Absolutely. They are going to have to think deliberately about their outcomes and focus more on not only treating outcomes but preventing outcomes. Really that's the shift that we want to see occurring for our membership. How do we start protocols that can reduce lengths of stay? How do we start protocols that can minimize wound complications for which we don't get paid for anymore with yes. this act? And so we really have to be deliberate in that and not just focus on, yes, I'm taking this patient to surgery, but how do we improve their outcomes uh, so that everyone is in a better place? Well, yeah, you're talking about the responsibility extending well beyond the operation itself. Absolutely. And, and yet, apparently, uh, the members won't be reimbursed for that, from what you're saying? No. Um, there are a checklist of complications that Medicare will not long, no longer pay for if they occur in the hospital setting. So the hospital will have to take the loss? The hospital will have to take the loss, which really puts a big pressure on the hospital system and surgical units to think of ideas on how to minimize these, um, these complications. And do it with their existing budget. And do it with, their, and do it with less of a budget. Oh. <laughs> these are these must be like the, the, the talk of, of your membership right now. It's the talk of the membership, but really I see it as an exciting time because it's an opportunity for us to really push forward what we do and to do it better. So I see the challenge and I hope that our membership embrace the challenge. Um, legislation's become so important for the organization now. Um, does the uh, Public Policy Advocacy Committee, do you get involved in lobbying or involved in legislative efforts? That is a great question and that is the charge for our committee is to get our membership more involved in health care. As you know, across the different specialties, not just surgical specialties, less than 5% of, uh, um, of practitioners are involved in lobbying and involved in the decisions that are made in, at, on the Capitol. So we started a, a website called SSATadvocacy.com to have our membership engage in lobbying Congress for hot ticket items such as the SGR Repeal Act, which is, which is a hot ticket item. We've made the website so easy. They click a button right. and it sends automatically to their individualized representatives to Congress a letter saying we are against or for this bill based on how the bill pertains to us as a society. Yeah, I, the SSAT is going through such dramatic, uh, literally transformation in terms of Absolutely. expectations. And, and 
you've got to make sure they play a role in, in what is being imposed upon them. And it is our duty from the society side to make it easy for our busy practitioners to be able to engage in these lobbying activities. We also launched a scholarship, a, the Brandeis Scholarship in conjunction with the American College of Surgeons so that we can educate each year a member of our society on health care policy and they then will have to serve on our committee. Well, I can see a lot's going to be happening over the a next A lot will year. be happening, and it's exciting times. Dr. K. Marie Lombardo, thank you so much. Really appreciate your being here. Thank you for having me. If you want to follow the activities here at DDW, please follow our blog site on the web, or you can follow us on Twitter. Our hashtag is DDW14. Now, if you want to follow the activities specifically of the SSAT, the hashtag is SSAT14. 14.